Dear MSS community, the discovery I'm about to present here will be revolutionary, if it can be confirmed. It has the potential to change how people program on the platform, or even how people look at it once and for all. But right now, I need your help. In my last video, I discussed why the VDP for the MSX2 and the MSX2 Plus often lags behind its peers in terms of performance despite being an impressive design. And to cut a very long analysis short, it comes down to slow VRAM accesses, which are these chips over here. But what if I tell you that there is untapped potential within these chips, and all it takes to unleash that performance is just one single switch, a turbo mode switch, if you like, on the V958. Well, this is impossible, you might say. As impossible as a protected mode on the Z80. So buckle up. This story involves a mysterious missing bit from all official documentation, a legendary demo group that has been defunct for decades, a cryptic document whose importance is only understood by those with deep understanding about MSX programming, and you, the viewer who may solve this puzzle and start a new page for the entire community. But before we get into that, let's rewind and see how it all got started. Hi, I'm Andy, and this is my investigation into the secret turbo mode on the V9958. Our journey begins here, in register number 8 of the VDP register bank, the mode register 2. This is not a very exciting register. It is the kind that you set up once at the beginning of your program and never touch again. But let's do a breakdown of it anyway. The top two bits are for the mouse and light fan functionality, which nobody uses and are subsequently deleted from the V958. The next two bits are transparency and color bus, used to superimpose other video signals with the output of the VDP and digitize video signal. Again, these bits saw little use outside of some professional equipment. The next one is video RAM select, which must be set to 1 as all MS2 and higher have 64K or more VRAM. The last bit is black and white, which is probably used to enhance clarity of high resolution video on monochrome monitors. It may be helpful for some word processing applications, but as no one is writing a graduate thesis on the MSX, we can also ignore this bit. The only interesting bit here is the SPD bit, which disables sprites. But as we have discussed in the last video, it doesn't actually help with bandwidth that much, despite technically allowing a bit more time for the CPU and command engine to access VRAM. And there's bit 2, which needs no introduction, as it is 0 and must be set to 0 in all documentations I can find. All but 1. There is one document on firehunters.com buried within a bunch of other MSX related files. It is simply named V1958 Registers. To untrained eyes, this document is gibberish, a cryptic codebook containing random numbers and acronyms. However, for those who is familiar with assembly programming on the MSX, the meaning of its content is clear. It's a distilled version of the manuals. A cheat sheet of sorts, made for those people who use these registers a lot. Remember that fact, it will come up later. On the surface, this document is simply a shrunk down version of the official one produced by Yamaha, and contains no information except those covered in more detail in the data books. But within the vast sea of bits, one stands out. And this bit is, you guessed it, Bit 2 of register number 8. Instead of simply being forced to 0, this bit is named VRS0, and the original VRAM select bit is named VRS1. If we scroll down to the description of those bits, we'll find that 0 and 0 means 1 times 16 kibibytes. 0 1 means 4 times 16 kibibytes. 1 0 means 1 times 64 kibibytes, and for a 1 and a 1, it just says 64 kibibytes high speed. Remember, I spent hours and hours making a video 
just to rant on how slow the VRAM access on the MSX is. Imagine my excitement when I saw that you can activate high speed VRAM by simply setting a bit. But soon, reality caught on. If this feature does exist, it will be groundbreaking. Why would Yamaha leave out such a killer feature out of all of this documentation? A simple explanation would be that this is the early internal version of the documentation when such a feature was proposed. Then it turned out to be too hard to implement or would cause some compatibility issues with older software. So the feature was dropped from the final chip design and thus the final documentations. The problem is that this piece of documentation is not produced by Yamaha themselves. Instead, it is produced by none other than Mayhem. Now, in case you don't know, Mayhem was an active and talented demo group back in the 90s. Their demos are ranked some of the best of all time on the entire MSX platform. These are less likely to be the sort of people who have access to Yamaha internal documents and more likely to be the sort of people who pro-power themselves in order to find new tricks to unlock more performance. Furthermore, if you lay out the VRS bits and the corresponding VRAM type on a table, you will realize that the high speed option should stand for 64K by 4-bit DRAM. This makes sense because larger memory ICs are manufactured in a more advanced process nodes, which not only improves the size of the RAM, but also the speed. Take TI's DRAM lineup as an example. Each generation has a new, faster variant of the chip. 150 nanosecond was the fastest among the 16K bit chips, but was the slowest in the 256K category. 64K by 4 bit DRAMs has the potential to go much faster than previous generations. Therefore, it is reasonable to have a separate set of timings for them. Fortunately, the Mayhem document includes an email address. So, I sent them an email to ask about the mysterious VRS zero bit. However, the email bounced, as I expected. The next option would be to test it on an MSX2 Plus myself. Unfortunately, I hit a roadblock here. You see, I live in the UK and the MSX2 Plus computers, well, they aren't really sold here. The few that made it into the country end up in the hands of collectors who doesn't want to sell them. And the last time I checked on eBay, all listings are from Japan and cost a fortune. I simply can't find justification for hurting my wallet, or worse, hurting these lovely pieces of computing history in the process of intercontinental shipping just to fulfill my own curiosity for literally a single bit. So I decided to call for help from the community. And here is where you, the viewer, can come into this story and make history as the one who changes MSX programming forever. If you have an MSX2 or 2 Plus, you can try writing a 1 to that bit and see if anything changes. It would be better if you have a logic analyzer or an oscilloscope. Try hooking it up to the memory bus or the VDB and compare the timing with the bit off versus on. However, I have to warn you that this is going directly against the official documentation and may cause a bus conflict. So, be sure you know what you are doing. But you can also help even if you don't own an MSX. If you understand Japanese and know Japanese websites that host such information, try looking for the original documents or even internal ones produced by Yamaha. If you happen to know someone who is a member of the Mayhem team, you can try contacting them about this bit and how it appeared in their document. And if you are new to my channel, try clicking that subscribe button for more contents like this. And if you really like my retro content, try heading to my Patreon using the link in the description below and become a member for just $1 a month. But that's it for this video, I'm Andy, I will see you in the next one.